good evening friends uh, welcome back to uh, shastamondu once again and we are very happy to say that we got back dr shubham garg who was with us last week in fact he spoke about cancer and covid but he is a cancer specialist he is an oncologist so i think the best part of what he should be sharing got missed out last week because he mostly spoke of cancer and covid i think cancer is equally dangerous as covid maybe covid now is in the limelight because it's a new disease and it's spreading like wildfire but cancer is no less dangerous than covid so it is very important for us to understand what is cancer we need to know what are the symptoms you see many of us we are not even aware of what are the symptoms of cancer and that is why often we land up to the doctor when we are in the last stage and so we are going to understand what is the first stage second stage last stage that also dr shubham garg is going to take us through many of us have got lot of uh, thoughts about chemotherapy radiotherapy side effects will this burn will my hair fall what will happen will i get well again so there are lot of questions you know we have in our mind regarding cancer and the most important uh, question even today is that will i survive that is the most important question that uh, you know we have about cancer so today dr garg who is a great name in cancer he is uh, he has done his mc in oncology Uh, from Tata Memorial uh, Hospital, he was a specialist registrar. He's been with Tata Memorial for a long time. Today, he's a consultant in Fortis. So, I think he's got a great background, and he's the right person to talk to regarding cancer. So, we invite him. So, thank you, Dr. Garg, to be back once again with us, with Asto Bundu. We welcome you to this program, and uh, we hope today we will be able to share some light on. this very important topic cancer so the first question that comes to my mind of the world is uh, which is more dangerous cancer or covid that is the last question which i asked you last yes. time when we ended so i start with the same question again for people to understand you know which is more dangerous covid okay we already have got our first uh, you know uh, uh, caller Uh, Hafizur Rahman, how are you, Dada? Hafiz Bhai, who bhalo achi? Apniyo bhalo achi? Nasha kori oni din pore apna ke deklam. Hafiz Bhai was a very good friend of mine. So today to get him back on this show, I feel very happy. Oni dhono baad Hafiz Bhai apni aama ke joga jog pore chena. Aama theri program dekte n. Aaj ke amra cancer niye kotha bolbo. Ebang apni oni kicho oi the kunamar arey ko bonishto bondu. Kazi Ahmed, he is a legendary trainer, uh, uh, Dr. Garg in Bangladesh. He's a legendary wow. trainer. He's considered as a legend in Bangladesh. So we have with us Kazi Bhai also. Thank you, Kazi Bhai. It's a great honor and privilege that you have joined this program. We hope you can be here for a while and you know get some insight about cancer, which is you know a rage. Oh, but today, of course, COVID has taken over cancer. But uh, still, uh, Doctor Gar, going back to you, uh, which is more dangerous, COVID or cancer? Oh, we have oh. another. Uh, you see, we have got uh, Subir Acharya coming in. Subir Acharji. He he was working with Vesuvius. I don't know whether Subir is still there with Vesuvius. He, he he was to work with one of my clients. Very good evening, Subir. Uh, stay tuned, and you'll get some good insights about cancer today. Yes, doctor. So at the onset, thank you, thank you, Mr. Sen Gupta, for getting me back. And I must say that uh, I I feel uh, yours is the perfect medium uh, to get connected to the people, and what you're doing is a real great no noble job that. Uh, like i said last time also spreading the information and the right information is the most important thing and uh, what what pains us as clinicians or doctors most is that if the right message does not go into the public uh, it creates a, a level of mistrust between the treating physicians and the patients so the expectations have to be correct and we really need more people like you and more organizations like uh, shastra bandhu to get us connected to the right sort of audience so going back to your uh, question that which is more dangerous you know uh, last time also i gave you an example of you know getting into a car accident and you have a head injury along with a fracture of the hand and the head injury becomes more important although it's the fracture of the hand which might leave you uh, functionally impaired for the rest of your life and you might not be able to earn money so 
the acuteness i say acuteness uh, or in simple words the rapidity with which covid has come it has taken precedence over cancer to the extent that the cancer treatment has been halted for a lot of patients a cancer treatment could not be started for a lot of patients and cancer uh, treatment got delayed for a lot of patients just because the rapidity which with uh, covid came but uh, it is uh, right to say that both covid and cancer in uh, when they stand uh, uh, head to head both of them are equally bad uh, the the bad part about covid it with the rapidity which it uh, ascends into the body but the good part also is once you improve you are completely cured of it which is not true in case of cancer cancer might actually take a while to present itself but the treatment and the scar it leaves is lifelong so you know you can't really compare uh, chalk and cheese but uh, the the situation we are in we have to coexist with both of them right Great. Uh, we also welcome Sapir Bamet from Bangladesh. He is also uh, welcomed you to this program, Dr. Gard. Yes, so uh, very happy to see you know uh, people responding. Great. Uh, and Pazi Bhai is absolutely he's saying absolutely right, Dada, about whatever you just said. So great, uh, Doctor. You see, uh, Doctor Babu, jeta bolne, je COVID or cancer, in both the jeta uni bojate chaise. The COVID uh, or cancer equally dangerous. Into jeta hoy. कोविड होय तो होय मानुष शेरे जाय एक बार शेरे गेले से ठीक होय जाय किंतु कैंसर एमोन एकटा जिनिस दे वंस इट हैपेंस इफ कैंसर हैपेंस इट मे लीव अ लाइफ लॉन्ग स्कार माने सारा जीवन एर जन्य होटाय तो आपना साथी होय थाकबे इट विल बी अ कंपेनियन किंतु कोविड जेटा होबे ओटा होबे एवं आपनी जदि इफ यू आर फॉर्चूनेट आपनी जदि सेरकम लकी होन आपनी जदि बेचे जान इफ यू आर अलाइव फ्रॉम कोविड देन कोविड मूव्स अवे फ्रॉम योर लाइफ माने आपनी जीवन तक छोड़े चले जाय माने कोविड डज नॉट Create a permanent scar. Jodi o uh, doctor, uh, although here I would can only uh, uh, put in. Although today we don't discuss this, but this is just a thought that in COVID also we are seeing a lot of organs getting failed. Post COVID, a lot of patients, you know, their kidneys, their uh, liver, you know, a lot of organs are getting affected. So maybe COVID also to that extent is leaving a little bit of scar. May not be as dangerous as cancer. Yes. so we we still we still don't have that data and you know anything unknown which happens to a covid patient we attribute it to covid that you know they might have had covid that is why this thing happened so that data is still hazy uh -huh. but but uh, the quantum with which cancer affects a person even after they they get all right is uh, it it you know it it not just leaves a physical or a functional scar it leaves a mental scar in the body whenever a patient develops something the first fear which gra grasps the family is that did the cancer come back so that is that is the fear that i am talking about. great great okay so uh, we have again jamil from bangladesh joining in thank you jamil for joining in this program great to see you okay dr garg my next question you know we have heard cancer for ages so can you tell us what is cancer if you had to describe in a small you know brief way what does cancer mean okay okay so basically cancer is nothing but a collection of abnormal cells you know if you have done science for some time and people who understand it our body is made up of small 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 cells you know cells which you can't see by the naked eye but is seen under a microscope so our body is made up of that multiple multiple small cells and when a cell becomes abnormal it and it continues to multiply it presents as a cancer okay now our body our body has a defense mechanism that it identifies that abnormal cells and it kills those cells for whatever reasons your uh, abnormal cells are not detected or are skipped from that uh, detection system they continue to multiply and this abnormal cells are what uh, you know presents to us in different forms which uh, i uh, which uh, i hope we'll talk about uh, and it is these abnormal cancer cells which actually present to us as uh, what we know as cancer and they have the potential to spread into multiple organs which is what comes into the stages of cancer so a cancer is nothing but a group of abnormal cells those cells which have uh, which were supposed to die but somehow have been overlooked and somehow uh, did not get detected by the body mechanisms to be picked up for death so it is basically a failure of our internal system to identify those abnormal cells and these abnormal cells continue to multiply and present as cancer wonderful i think dr garg jeta bollen 
মানে পুট ইট ভেরি সিম্পলি মানে নট গোয়িং বাই সায়েন্স যে সাপোজ ইটস আ কান্ট্রি একটা দেশ একটা দেশে বর্ডারে মিলিটারি দাঁড়িয়ে আছে ইউ নো দ্য মিলিটারি ইজ স্ট্যান্ডিং দি এনিমি ইজ অন দি অপোজিট সাইড মানে যে শত্রু তারা দাঁড়িয়ে আছে মিলিটারি শুড বি কিলিং দি এনিমি গুলি করে চালিয়ে দেবে কিন্তু ওই যে এনিমি আছে সেই এনিমিটা দেখছে যে ফাঁক আছে देयर इज सम গ্যাপ এবং কোথাও কোনো মিলিটারি নেই ওই গ্যাপ দিয়ে মিলিটারি এই সেই এনিমিটা শত্রুটা ঢুকে যাচ্ছে ওই দেশে ওই দেশে ঢুকে আস্তে আস্তে পুরো দেশকে ছড়িয়ে দিচ্ছে তারপর তখন দেশ বুঝতে পারছে আরে বাবা আমাদের পুরো দেশে এরকম এনিমি ছড়িয়ে গেছে এরকম এত শত্রু কখন তার আর কিছু করার থাকে না সো ইটস লাইক when the enemy is spreading across the country even without the country realizing it and once it realizes it becomes too late then it doesn't have the strength to fight that enemy because that enemy is so large so you know cancer is something like this jekhane amader shori oi je cancer er cells jeta ke uni doctor gun bolchen ota ke identify korte parche na mane oke guli kore marte parini kintu ko kill them oke marte parini bole o ki koreche o sara bodi shorire chhoriye porte amader shorire it is spreading across our body and that is what is harming us doctor gun have i given the right analogy perfect sir perfect i don't think i could have it explained it this way and i'm sure i will carry this forward <laughs> whenever i have to explain it next time i think that is the perfect explanation perfect i think that is and i think see i am also a motivational speaker doctor mm-hmm. and i use stories in my motivational talks yeah, 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 so i mean, yeah. i always look at stories you know uh, so i try yes. to get a story from what you say perfect perfectly done okay. perfect great great okay doctor what is a tumor like how is a tumor different from cancer okay so you know different? so cancer is a uh, uh, tumor is a broader term you know you could have tumors which may be cancerous or may not be cancerous so i will give you an example not all balls are cricket balls it could be a tennis ball it could be a plastic ball you know i'm ta- uh, adopting your technique mr sen gupta now giving an example yes, sure sure please go ahead so so a tumor might or might not be cancerous now what we know of cancers is that cancers tend to multiply and spread elsewhere okay so uh, this is what a cancer is so but a tumor might be uh, might not have the potential to spread okay so these are for example sometimes in your body you have multiple small soft soft uh, uh, soft soft lumps inside the body this is this is known as lipoma or you know fat accumulation these are not cancers but they are just a uh, collection of uh, normal cells at abnormal places which is lipoma which is which you can call it a tumor but it will never spread it will never cause you harm it will never spread so uh, many people use these terms um, um, uh, interchangeably that it's a tumor it's a cancer but when we talk scientifically we talk whether this tumor is benign benign matlab it will not spread and malignant malignant means it's a cancer and might spread for us it is very important to differentiate between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor okay a malignant tumor is the one which tends to spread and we have a potent we we are more uh, we are more eager to treat those patients because if we don't treat it at the right time it would spread at else, elsewhere okay great so i understand so basically tumors are of two types one is benign and the other is malignant the benign tumor is uh, harmless it doesn't harm you so much it but the malignant not, tumor spread. harms you it will not spread yeah like yes, yes. malignant will spread and harm you right yes, yes. so great i i i i i got it so doctor how would i know that i have a tumor inside my body and whether that tumor is malignant or benign how would i know so Suppose i have a tumor inside my liver how would i know that i have it yeah so so that is the problem with cancer that uh, <clears throat> whenever it's inside a body cavity a body cavity means the chest cavity abdominal cavity it becomes uh, uh, you know these are big cavities so if that the tumor has to become big in size to cause a effect for you to notice see you 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 uh, none of us get routine tests done we go to a doctor only when we have some problem and for that you know your 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 abdomen is this big your abdomen is bi- this big but by that time the tumor becomes big enough to cause a symptom you know you will not be able to detect it okay that is why uh, uh, you know all of us have heard of breast cancer why because it's on yeah. the surface it's on the surface a female can touch it and see that i have a lump 
but same you cannot do with your liver only a uh, liver can only manifest when you have some pain and then you will go for a ultrasound now for that pain to happen the tumor has to acquire some size and by the time it acquires that size it might happen that the tumor have already gone from a lower stage to a higher stage okay great uh, dr garg we have tashmi muntazi choudhury he was there last week also with us oh yes Yes, uh, he he works with IDLC and he is holding a very important position there. So welcome, Tashmin Bhai, to the program and thank you for joining back once again. Today we are discussing a very important topic on cancer. In fact, Tashmin Bhai had come for his treatment. Uh, to come not for his treatment, his mother's treatment to Calcutta. So I think this program could interest him also. So now thank you, thank you, what, thank you, Rosary. Thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah. So uh, coming back to what you just said, did they how like i don't know like you were saying that it could be that by the time i realize that i have a tumor inside my liver that and if it is a malignant tumor then it might have gone to a stage where i may not be cured so what is it then one can do to avoid this sort of situation coming in their lives so uh, one way one way about would be to get a routine checkup done you know irrespective if you have symptoms or not you go for a routine examination which is a routine health che health checkup that uh, now are uh, uh, becoming more and more routine and you go to a doctor or a general physician or your family physician you ask them to prescribe you routine tests and these are being offered very routinely now some 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 good companies even get them for their uh, employees done so if it is being done so that that is what we call call as a asymptomatic patient you know asymptomatic patient is a patient who has no symptoms you know and he has been picked up by screening test you know you are screening those patients whether they have a disease or not okay but uh, what i see it's it's not financially also possible and it is not always feasible that we go for a routine test every year a battery of test for the whole family so what i usually suggest is one is that you know you should listen to your body how should you listen to your body if you have uh, what we tend to do if we have little pain abdomen we take a tablet by ourselves and the pain disappears and we postpone visiting a doctor till we can avoid it my request to everybody who's listening through you and through your uh, facebook is that if you have a complaint you know if you have a problem which is lingering for a long time is not improving by a routine uh, medication and continues to trouble you don't wait to consult a doctor because your doctor whether it's a uh, oncologist or whether it's a family physician but he is more uh, he, you know he is more in tune to picking up these things than you are they will be able to pick up these things faster and they might advise a test now in our routine practice what happens if a doctor prescribes a test and the test comes out to be normal we tend to say are why did they get the test done it was not required only no it's not that they had something in the back of the mind and you should be happy that your test came negative you should not say that why was the test done it is good that the test came negative because if the test had come positive it would have been a bad news for you so yes, i would say yes. that i would say that you should have a lower threshold of getting yourself investigated and uh, that is why it's a very important role of a local physician to take that decision whether to get you investigated or not but the responsibility to go to a doctor lies on yourself and you should listen to your body if your body says that they need to see a doctor don't postpone it do not self medicate go and see a doctor great doctor and i think that is the biggest problem with india is that we try to do self medication yes that is the first step we do we don't we prefer not to go to a doctor because this uh, believe me the thought in the mind is that we'll get fleeced the problem is that you know patients are very scared you know i am yeah, very upfront with this i agree you know that we'll get fleeced so you know people say in india don't go to lawyers and doctors because they <laughs> so rather than saving you you'll get killed by them so uh, that is the common perception okay tashmin bhai has just sent a message he's thank you and me and he's enjoying this program thank you tashmin bhai that you are enjoying this program we are too also very happy to see that you are enjoying this program and dr garg to tell you one thing maybe a little bit of humor in this serious topic is that we just use the word asymptomatic maybe before covid before covid uh, you know we wouldn't have known what is asymptomatic but by now we have yeah. realized what is asymptomatic 
yes. we know what you know is a test and what happens you know so cancer hasn't taught us what is asymptomatic but covid <laughs> has so i think covid has greater yes. deep than cancer in that way uh, covid is a greater deep than cancer so i think people will now take their lives much more seriously because after covid many people have realized that oh, yes. you know it is uh, not right to just keep it on hold their treatment and do self medication because that could be dangerous and a life can be lost so i think covid has taught us a lot of things including you know this that you know self medication is not the right medication so i think that this is a great lesson pullanda my very good friend from pune from uh, bombay has joined pullan charity so thank you pullanda for joining and he's saying it's a very good session thank you pullanda that you are enjoying this session okay doctor but my next question to you is that uh, then can you give us some early signs of cancer like how would i know that i could have cancer what could be some early signs to detect or feel that i have cancer okay so <clears throat> there are there are some things so uh, i i uh, in the when i talked about uh, how to define cancer i use the word abnormal cells okay so what i say is anything which is abnormal anything which is persisting for a long time anything which is not getting treated within 3 to 4 weeks is should ring a alarm bell so i will give you three common signs which we should never uh, uh, never discount and should pay attention to is one is a abnormal bleeding now this abnormal ble- no bleeding is normal okay so this abnormal bleeding there could be blood in your cuff there could be blood in your vomitus there could be blood in your stools there could be blood in your urine these are the four things which are very important so anything which is uh, you know many yes, times urine stool cuff and spit uh, cuff and vomiting 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 okay yes yes so many times many times patient come that they had uh, you know piles that you know they they had blood in the stools and they they thought that it was just hemorrhoids or piles that they commonly believe or fissure and they were seeing a local doctor but if it's something which is not getting treated by a local treatment then it is very important that you consult probably a different doctor or somebody more senior to that so that you know that you are not suffering for something more sinister so one was abnormal bleeding okay the other is any abnormal swelling now this abnormal swelling can be anywhere okay this abnormal swelling can be in your breast in case of a female patient it can be abnormal swelling in your uh, hands in your thighs in any of the extremities if i can put it okay this can be abnormal swelling in your neck okay so these are things which you when you how will you diagnose this you will diagnose them when you are taking a bath you know when you are taking a bath when you are rubbing soap anywhere you will feel that oh there is a small there is a small lump here in the in the armpit or in the breast okay probably you will discount it for a day or two but if you keep on uh, doing it if you keep on examining yourself and you feel that it's probably enlarging in size it's painless to begin with it's not going away then it should ring a alarm okay and the third thing is having any abnormal ulcer now that's what what is a ulcer ulcer is any erosion okay so when you get a injury in your hand or in your if you fall down you see there is there is some blood coming out and the skin gets torn you see something uh, reddish there that is a ulcer now these ulcers could happen in your mouth in your oral cavity okay so because uh, both uh, uh, in in our population there is a habit of uh, using a lot of uh, tobacco both in the smokeless and the smoked form that is why having these ulcers in the oral cavity anything which is there uh, many times they they are mistaken to be ulcers ulcers or ulcers which are related to nutritional deficiency but again i would say if a ulcer is persisting for a long time if it is painless if it is associated with bleeding if it is not going away with normal treatment you know normal treatment by giving multivitamins by visiting a doctor then you should then you should consult uh, the it, it should ring in your mind that you know it could be the start of a cancer and i need to talk to a doctor so three important things abnormal bleeding any abnormal lump and possibly any abnormal ulcer these are the three things that you should definitely keep in mind uh, to identify there are some very okay. subtle signs yes there are very some subtle signs of cancer which you know may not indicate a cancer but if they are there then you should probably not uh, you should consult her. that is abnormal loss of weight okay so if if you feel that you know you are not on a diet 
uh, you are doing your regular work but your appetite has gone down and you are losing a lot of weight rapidly then you should introspect that what is wrong with me you know uh, am i suffering from something i'm not saying that's cancer always it could be tuberculosis but you need to see a doctor for that similarly is uh, you know easy fatigability easy fatigability you get tired very easily you know in the morning you wake up you still feel tired you don't do anything in the uh, whole day and you still feel tired you know it's normal to feel tired if you work the whole day if you go to office if you come back if you do household work it's normal to feel tired but if you feel tired even without doing anything you know you have to look into inside that what is wrong with you okay similarly similarly having abnormal back pain okay pain pain in the bones okay now a pain in the bone could be related to doing a lot of heavy work you know my mother complains that you know she does the household work she does a lot of tidying up at the end of the day she has back ache that is normal that is acceptable to everybody everybody does it everybody has it but if you wake up in the morning you, you, even after a good night sleep and you feel that you are still having a back ache now this cannot be explained by just hard work or something there might be something sinister to it again it might not be a cancer but it needs to be investigated so these are small things that you need to keep in mind great uh, uh, dr gar ko sundor kore bojhalen je what are the uh, symptoms or the symptoms of cancer ebong uni jeta bollen sobche important uni jeta bolchen je jokhon amra bobi korchi ba amra jokhon amader stool pass korchi amader urine beroche tar shonge jodi rokto beroy tokhon amader kintu ekta create an alarm bell je rokto beroche keno ঠিক তেমনি আলসার উনি বলছেন যে মাউথ আলসার হতে পারে বা শরীরে কোনো রকম আলসার হতে পারে এটাকে ফেলে স্পেশালি ইফ ইট ইজ পেইনলেস যদি সেই আলসার আপনার কোনো যন্ত্রণা না দেয় কিন্তু রক্ত বেরিয়ে যাচ্ছে আপনি যে নরমাল আলসার ট্রিটমেন্ট করতেন তাতেও যদি সেটা না আসারে ইফ ইট ইজ নট গেটিং কিওর ইভেন আফটার ইউ নো ইওর নরমাল মেডিকেশন দিস দ্য ডক্টরস হ্যাভ गिवन ফর আলসার দেন ইট শুড ইউ নো ক্রিয়েট অ্যান অ্যালার্ম ইন ইওর মাইন্ড যে এটা আমাকে বাট একজন অনকোলজিস্টের সঙ্গে দেখা করে নিতে হবে একজন ক্যান্সার স্পেশালিস্টের সঙ্গে আমার কথা বলে নেওয়া দরকার তিন নম্বর উনি বললেন যখন আমরা স্নান করছি when we are bathing তখন যদি আমরা শরীরে কোথাও একটা অবনরমাল লাম্প দেখতে পাই এবং যদি দেখি সেই লামটা আস্তে আস্তে বড় হচ্ছে ইট बिकमिंग bigger although it may not be giving us pain we should at least consult উনি কিন্তু বলছেন না এগুলো ক্যান্সার but he is not saying these are cancer but he is saying that you should consult so that the doctor rule get away you cannot rule আপনি বলতে পারবেন না না এটা তো ক্যান্সার নয় তো আপনাকে এটাকে রুল আউট করার জন্য ইউ हैव टू मीट अ डॉक्टर যে ডক্টর সেটা দেখে ही विल सी द लंप एंड डॉक्टर बोलते नो दिस इज नॉट कैंसर सो डू मस्ट शो अ डॉक्टर नेक्स्ट উনি যেটা বলছেন যে ইফ ইউ লুজ অ্যাপেটাইট মানে আপনার খিদে হচ্ছে না সো दैट কুড অলসো ইউ নো বি টেকেন অ্যাজ এ সিম্পটম অফ ক্যান্সার আরেকটা উনি বলেন ফটি মানে আপনি খুব সহজে ক্লান্ত হয়ে যান মানে ঘুম থেকে উঠে আপনার যেমন তখন ইট ইজ বেটার দ্যাট ইউ নো ইউ শুড ইউ নো গো টু দা ডক্টর এন্ড ইউ নো চেক আপ মানে দিস আর অল সামথিং অ্যাবনরমাল মানে আপনার শরীরে whenever anything abnormal is happening মানে যখন কিছু এমন কিছু হচ্ছে যেটা সাধারণ নয় যেটা অন্য রকম তখন ইউ মাস্ট অলওয়েজ কনসাল্ট ইউ নো শুড নট লিভ ইট না এটা কিছু না আমরা ম্যাক্সিমাম সরা বলি না না এটা কিছু কোনো প্রবলেম হবে না নাথিং ইউ নাথিং দ্যাট ইজ নাথিং কিন্তু যখন সেটা সামথিং হয়ে যায় when it becomes something তখন দা ডক্টর সেজ আই ক্যান নট ডু এনি and i can do nothing like when we think it is nothing the doctor would have said something but now when we say something the doctor said nothing so it's like that you know so that is what i can say so great information okay i would like to thank priya ji priya gurnani he she stays in our housing complex and also uh, my very good friend priya bondopadhyay who also joined who has joined this program priya ji thank you very much priya is saying it's a wonderful session she's enjoying it priya ji says it's a very informative session thank you very much everyone you know that you all are listening to this program and you all are getting some good information that is the objective of shastra bundu to educate our audience to educate people so that you know we do not 
unnecessary fall in trouble the idea of shastra mundu of conducting these programs is to get the best doctors on board and to give information next week we are getting a doctor who's going to speak on black fungus so stay tuned with us next friday we are getting someone on the most relevant topic of today that is black fungus so we hope that we will you know be able to share a lot of information about covid and black fungus next week so great doctor so my next question to you we've heard about stages of cancer first stage second stage third stage what does this mean you know exactly what are stages and how are they treated you know and what are the chances of living you know on which stage you know my chances of living are more and which stage you know my chances are become dimmer so if you just yeah. elaborate yeah. on that Oh. i think i think stage is something which everybody knows about cancer and there are a lot of misconceptions also about it and whenever a patient comes to us they all they are want to know is what stage their cancer is but uh, just to set the ball rolling is that all you should know is that there are basically four stages of cancer so all cancers have four stages irrespective of whatever it is there might be a cancer having a lesser stage although this is just uh, uh, might be just one or two cancers which have three stages but almost all cancers have four stages no cancer has five stage okay so all of them has four stages there is nothing worse than a uh, fourth stage and uh, all cancers the uh, severity of the disease increases with the stage of cancer okay so one would be the least severe disease fourth would be the most severe disease okay so one thing is very clear total four stages first one is the least severe stage fourth one is the maximum severe or the worst stage that okay so now uh, if i they, you know staging is uh, not uh, it's different for different cancers so a breast staging for a breast cancer we we have almost a thousand page manual which describes staging for 200 cancers that uh, that happen in our body so no no two stagings are similar first you need to understand but if you were to get you know just a broad idea that how does staging work so the first stage is the one in which the cancer is very small and is restricted to one site only so i will give you the example of breast and use that to tell you the four stages so stage 1 would be that type of cancer which is small in size and restricted only to breast okay it would not have uh, spread anywhere okay and we have we have some size criteria also so uh, i will just explain about breast that anything which is less than 2 cm in size would be a stage 1 tumor okay now a stage 2 tumor would be something which is either increased in size you know or has spread from that breast okay to somewhere else now this somewhere else could either be as a form of a lymph node in the axilla now the cancer would spread from uh, that site to the blood now that before it goes into the blood it goes into what we know as lymph nodes these lymph nodes are smaller smaller collections which are which are present before the uh, blood vessels so before the blood the cancer reaches the blood vessel they would reach the lymph node so a stage 2 cancer would either be larger in size than the stage 1 cancer in case of breast if it is less than 2 cm it becomes stage 1 uh, if it is uh, more than 2 cm up to 5 cm it becomes stage 2 now if it goes into those lymph nodes and those lymph nodes become multiple in number then it becomes stage 3 okay stage 3 means that it has spread from the breast to some place else it has still not gone into the blood okay but once it involves multiple organs so if it was in the breast and now you see it it's there in the side the lungs also inside the liver also inside the bones also then it becomes stage 4 4 means where you know you have the worst kind of disease and this is how the staging is so again to repeat stage 1 is a localized localized means it's only at one place very small in size stage 2 would be you know something bigger but still it is localized it's not spread anywhere stage 3 would be something which is spread to regional sites now regional sites are those lymph nodes that we know of and stage 4 would be when it has spread to some other organ in uh, in the body like lung liver or the bones right right uh, doctor again go back to my old analogy like if there is an enemy yeah. uh, which wants to invade our country So, if only ten soldiers could have uh, seeped into our country, we would have said it's the first great cancer because just uh, 
you know it's, it's not so alarming those 10 can be removed easily because there are just 10 people now when it comes to the second stage uh, where we are saying it is still localized which means 10 soldiers have become 50 soldiers or 100 soldiers but it hasn't been able to seep more into our country say suppose they have come into arunachal pradesh they may be just within arunachal pradesh. they have not come into other 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 states now soldiers start spreading they go to assam they go to tripura and other states that's when we are moving towards the third stage that is the regional that region is getting affected and the fourth stage is when they step into bengal when they step into your home city you know delhi so if the enemy has stepped into delhi that is dangerous and that is the yeah. fourth grade where right. you know it is spreading across the organs in the body so you see, this is what the grades mean. Basically, you know, first is the least dangerous because you can treat it. You know, I am not understanding, you know, I'm not a medical man, but you are such a great teacher. You're such a great professor that you know, very easy to understand. So what I understood is, you know, the first thing is very easy to deal with because it's localized. So it's not so difficult and it's very easily curable. The second one also is not so difficult because it is within a region. It is, you don't have to find out, you know, where other places has it gone. The third stage is, you know, where, uh, you know, yeah, third stage also is controllable, but the fourth stage, when it spreads to all the other organs, that is when it becomes very difficult because now you have a uh, case where the cancer is spread across the body. It's a multiple uh, situation where the malignancy has reached to the various parts of the body. Am I right in my understanding? Definitely, definitely. I think this is this is again one of the easier way to explain it by the uh, army invasion and thing that yes, this is this is what I really meant. Thank you so much for great, simplifying. Great, great, great. Okay, I have a question from one of our viewers, Shompa. Shompa again stays in our housing complex and she's our very good friend. And her question is: Is lung cancer hereditary? So she has a question: Is lung cancer hereditary? Okay, so uh, um, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Barnick, uh, lung cancer, you know, is not necessarily hereditary. Only 2% uh, of lung cancers are found to be hereditary in nature. It's not that if your uh, uh, if your uh, if there it's been there in the earlier generations, you will definitely have it. But what is peculiar about lung cancer is that there are a lot of uh, molecular markers involved in this, and we believe that that is why lung cancer has now become more and more treatable and the chances of cure are increasing and they are becoming better but lung i will not put that lung cancer is hereditary in nature it's not hereditary in nature. so taking up this you i think shompa you got your answer that uh, it is not hereditary now my next question taking you from shompa Boni, is that uh, is cancer hereditary or any kinds of cancer hereditary? so uh, of all the cancers, if there were 100 cancers, only 5% of cases would be hereditary in nature. And these are most commonly seen in females in breast, breast cancers, ovarian cancers, and amongst male in colorectal or uh, the colon cancer, yeah, intestine cancer. So these are the ones which we found are the most relevant uh, to uh, be hereditary in nature. So in females, it would be breast and ovarian cancers. Amongst male, it would be colorectal cancer. But if there Colo is... Colon and rectal. Colon and rectal. Colorectal. Yes, yes. Colon and rectal. Colon and rectal. Colon and okay. rectal. Great. Yes. Now, uh, so if, yeah. if there is very strong family history, if there are very strong family history, you know, you tell me that three generations had had cancer mm -hmm. and the mother and father both had cancers, then uh, even rarer types could be hereditary in nature, which could include pancreas and some other cancers. So uh, a family history becomes very important to ask, particularly if there are multiple family members suffering from cancer. Great. Uh, I think um, Shompa has just thanked you. And I have another good friend from Bombay, Kullanda, Kullan Chatterjee, asking you a question. Can something be highlighted on prostate cancer? Okay, okay, sir. So prostate cancer is one of uh, the better cancers to have. Why I say better is because there is no cancer which is good to have. But uh, amongst all cancers, prostate cancer is one of those better ones. Why so? Because one prostate cancer is a very, very slow growing cancer. 
it is so slow growing that if a person if a if a male has a prostate cancer prostate cancer there are more chances of the patient dying of something else rather than prostate cancer because it is so slowly growing now the problem with prostate cancer is because the prostate gland is very small in nature and prostate cancer uh, tends to happen in older age it is uh, often misdiagnosed or diagnosed very late because its symptoms uh, you know overlap with the symptoms of uh, 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 the uh, uh, prostate disease that we have in the old age where the prostate gets enlarged and you have to go to urine multiple times and multiple times at night so that is why prostate can cancer gets diagnosed in the late stage and usually it would have uh, the prostate cancer has a tendency to spread to the bones so that is why prostate cancer patients might uh, usually present with abnormal back pain and it spreads into the vertebra but even if you get diagnosed with prostate cancer in stage 4 see i told you that if it spread to some other organs it becomes stage 4 so now if okay. prostate, if you have prostate cancer and if it has spread to the vertebra which is the bones even then the therapy is so good and it is so slow growing that there are chances that you will outlive the disease that you will die not of the disease but some other factors then uh, the prostate cancer itself wonderful so polan i think you got your answer the prostate cancer hole apnar chances of dying is much lesser among what treatment tao mane o therapy ta is much better uh, and i think a wonderful logic as doctor said it is a very slow growing cancer it doesn't grow fast so um, and again we uh, make a, a confusion there's a confusion between enlarged prostate and cancer so doctor how would we differentiate between enlarged prostate and a person having prostate cancer like yeah. symptoms is there any yeah. differentiation between no so symptomatic logy they will present with the same symptoms uh, there there is a blood test that we can do which is known as the serum prostate specific antigen or psa test that we can do now this psa psa might be enlarged in your blood even in case of uh, enlarged prostate but in case of a cancer it becomes enlarged by many fold so the normal value of psa is up to 4 nanogram per ml if it becomes 6 or 8 or 10 then the doctor might be worried that it could be a cancer versus a uh, enlarged prostate enlarged but prostate. yes but if the psa becomes as high as 100 then we definitely know that it is because of cancer and not because of a uh, just a enlarged prostate so uh, the first is that your doctor would ask you to do in case you present with a enlarged prostate would be to get a serum psa done if your serum psa is you know very high then they would have a very high chance of suspecting a prostate cancer and they would ask for a imaging imaging in form usually in form of an ultrasound to look at the prostate if on ultrasound the prostate is you know uniformly enlarged okay then the chances of it being cancer are on a lower side but if the prostate is abnormally enlarged you know only one side of the prostate is enlarged and the other side is normal or if they see some lump inside the prostate on ultrasound then there are high chances of it being cancerous and after that they advise you to go for a biopsy great, great wonderful okay doctor now uh... going back to you know the treatment you know treatment for cancer uh, the first question that comes to our mind is cancer curable uh, so the first answer that i have that first stage is curable second stage to some extent so now if you can explain to us stage by stage uh, in a general format i'm not saying because as you said you know cancer has a different uh, a way of uh, defining itself so uh, so just give us a general idea of what are the so, treatment modalities for cancer so uh, let let us deal with the question of is cancer curable little later let us understand more about the treatment which is available so uh, i'm sure all of you would know that there are basically three forms of treatment of cancer one is surgery the other is radiotherapy and the third is chemotherapy and i'll come into detail about all of this so the simplest way or the crudest way to deal it is like you said if an enemy comes into the uh, is to just remove the energy uh, enemy and throw him out okay so that is what a surgeon does you know the surgeon goes in he removes a part of the organ uh, which is affected with cancer either the complete organ or just a part of it and they remove it from the body that is the best 
probably the easiest and the most logical form of treating a cancer you know you go in take that part out do away with it okay <clears throat> now this is what a surgeon does okay but what a cancer surgeon does is that they just don't remove that part but they also remove a normal tissue around it so i will give you an example if i have to remove a breast lump i will not just remove the breast lump i will remove a almost a centimeter of normal tissue around it because i might if i remove the lump i will remove i will miss those microscopic cells which i cannot see from the naked eye or with my fingers cannot feel that is why we remove a extra tissue from the cancerous site and this is known as margin so you should have a adequate margin uh, when you remove that cancer if you are doing a surgery plus you should always remove the affected lymph nodes they might be involved they might not be involved you don't know but you should always go in and remove those nodes so that is the difference between a normal surgery versus a surgery for a cancer which is done by a trained cancer surgeon that you have to go and remove in a systematic way where you remove not just the cancer but a normal tissue around it which is known as margin and lymph nodes in which that a part of the body drains which are known as the regional lymph nodes so you always club these two and that is what a cancer surgery does now this is uh, become i'll just interrupt doctor suppose you just said uh, the two uh, most common cancers are the women are breast and ovarian cancer yes so would your suggestion that such a cancer is detected one should go, uh, go to a gynecologist to have surgery no no or no, no. Uh, should he go to a cancer surgery no uh, these, no because ladies think you know breast is uh, you know they prefer uh, the the the, the gyne a woman gynecologist to do this so just i want you to get throw some light no. on this that why not go a gynecologist and why an oncologist yes is needed for So, you said right you know the tissues on the side the margin and so many so it's the yeah, uh, normal doctor may not i i appreciate but if you could just elaborate a little more on this why not a normal surgeon and why not why an oncologist so uh, when when you go inside the body and you want to remove a part of part or the whole organ which is affected with cancer you don't you want to remove it in such a way that the cancer does not come back and all of us know that the cancer spread through the blood vessels and it goes into the regional lymph nodes so that is why whenever we remove cancer we have to do a radical treatment you will uh, very commonly hear a word we do a radical surgery and that radical surgery is we don't just remove the cancer we remove a part of the normal tissue around it now how much is normal who will decide that this comes with training this comes with experience this comes with doing multiple that form of surgery so a cancer surgeon will be more in tune with these kind of procedures they will they would have done a lot many cancer procedures as such so they would know how much margin to take how much normal tissue to remove one thing is this now not only do they remove the organ along with the normal margin they also remove the lymph nodes now these lymph nodes are along the blood vessel so you took the example of uh, uterine cancer when we remove the uterine cancer we just don't remove the uterus we go along the blood vessels which supply blood to the uterus and we remove the lymph nodes which a normal gynecologist would not do if they have not been trained for it. okay and if you don't remove the if you don't remove the uh, if you don't remove those lymph nodes you will never come to know whether they were involved or not and once then you will not be able to have a complete staging okay so that is why it is very important see surgery you can do at one go itself and that has to be the best attempt that is why surgery is a irreversible process it's not like a medicine that you can change it after taking two courses of it that is why whenever you take a decision for surgery it has to be with the most experienced team and the team which gives you the most confidence that they will do it so that is why that surgery has to be performed in such a way that nothing is left behind and there are nothing left to chance you can't take a chance with yourself that is the main difference between getting it done from a normal surgeon versus a cancer surgeon correct fantastic i think uh, i will just again uh, put it very simply because you know i don't understand so much of medical uh, you know terms but uh, what i have grasped from it is like suppose mane ami banglay bolchi je je lokta mishti banaye 
তাকে যদি বলি বিরিয়ানি বানাতে সে পারবে না ইউ হালওয়াই ইফ আই টেল হালওয়াই টু মেক বিরিয়ানি ইউ নো হি মাইট নো হাউ টু কুক হি মাইট নো হাউ টু কুক বাট অবভিয়াসলি হালওয়াই ক্যান নট মেক বিরিয়ানি অর আ গাই হু মেকস বিরিয়ানি ক্যান নট বিকাম আ হালওয়াই তো উই হ্যাভ টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড যে যে মিষ্টি বানায় তাকে দিয়ে যদি বলি বিরিয়ানি বানাও সে বিরিয়ানিটা না বানাবে কিন্তু সেটা কি আমরা এনজয় করব না বাট আবার বিরিয়ানি যদি মিষ্টি বানায় সেটা মধ্যে মিষ্টি থাকবে না ওনলি স্পিট এন আপ সো basically je jeta pare people who are specialized in whatever like an oncologist is specialized to shekhane any surgery which has to do with cancer dr shubham kar bolche je it is not just removing that area but or side e onek area thake jeta ke uni margin bolche je margin e onek tissues thake je gulo affected hoy jeta cancer oncology surgeon any oncology surgeon he will even know that better than a general surgeon or a surgeon of that particular discipline so shei jonne it is always better jodi apnar cancer er kichu hoy jodi apnar ovarian cancer hoy gynecologist na pore ekjon amon jini kina oncology dei specialist ba ajke apnar jodi colon rectal cancer hoy shekhane je eta dei specialist ei rokom doctor er shonge consult korun jate apni proper surgery hoy surgery ta the improper kan uni bolchen He said that even if you know you do a surgery, say from a gynecologist, he will not know exactly to what extent to get into. So, which one is cut out to cut out? So, if you have it, it is about correct a relapse. So, there might be a relapse because that person hasn't actually done it properly. Whereas the oncologist will do it in a way that she will see that properly. He will not show it. He will not put it there. It is cleaned up. and you know the repetition of it coming back or a relapse would be lesser so ei tai hote dr garger bolto so we must always consult an oncologist whenever we find anything wrong or we know amader amra bujhte parchi doctor if your question comes to my mind so suppose it's a normal tumor we do not know unless a biopsy is done whether it's cancer or not right so we will not know so what do you think that if suppose a simple tumor has happened in my ovary should i go to an oncologist to do the removal or should i go to a gynecologist so that is so, that is where the role of investigations come into play you know you get ct scans you get pet scans you get a mri to give you a feel of how the disease is going to be if there are very high chances of it being cancer you know i will not take that chance uh, and you know so i will i will just with the story if if it's your daughter's wedding you know you want to have the best of it you will not take chance with uh, somebody cooking food for her you will want to give the best food to be served similarly even if it's a small tumor which might not be cancer but i will not take that chance god forbid it comes as cancer i would want that it should have been operated by the best person so if there is right. a suspicion and i am not saying that gynecologists don't do a good job if they have been trained at a cancer center they will do a equally good job as a cancer surgeon and they can definitely go it but the training has to be there the uh, it should be complete in nature fantastic so doctor you are now stealing away my stories button i am understand <laughs> now i am a learner you get into my profession i am never going to get into but you don't get into my profession so i just, uh, you know but uh, you know using my stories it's nice nice that uh, you know not only am i learning you are also picking up from me it's very good i am very happy with that <laughs> okay so uh, getting back to where we were uh, now you just spoke of radio radiation chemotherapy right these are the two things so if you could just explain to us what are the what what do they mean and sure. when do they uh, when are they required and what are the side effects because a lot of people have this uh, thought you know that if i do radiation You know, I might face my burn or chemotherapy. I might lose my hair. So, if you can just educate us on these two. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, surgery becomes logic that you have a disease, you remove that part of the body, and you be done with it. But uh, as as our uh, science has improved, they have come out with things in which they can help you avoid surgery, and that is radiation. So, I will give you an example. The best example of this is a cancer of our voice box. if i were to say that a patient smokes and he develops a cancer of the vocal cords or the voice box the surgeon would do is he would go in and remove that voice box so you will become you will not be able to speak ever because there is nothing called as a artificial voice box or you will not be able to speak in the way that you want to speak 
if it's a singer that will be complete loss of profession if it's a teacher he will never be able to teach if he's a you know if he's a uh, uh, if he 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 is a, in a job like a sales person who has to that means he's a motivational speaker i did not want to use that analogy mr sen gupta actually <laughs> so 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 uh, so uh, with that you know we we would not want to operate on you because we are not heartless people you know we are doctors i am i am not a surgeon per se i am a oncologist at first and i am a doctor at first so it's not my job to do go in and take out everything in that case many times radiation help us so what radiation does is radiations are high dose of electrical radiation Uh, which goes and burns in your tumor if i can say it in very easy terms it does not actually burn it and it's definitely not electricity so there is no shock it with it or there is no feeling of warmth or you feel that you are burning but these are high energy radiation which go and burn your tumor and they are more pertinently uh, used in sites where we don't want to do a surgery so i would not want to do a surgery and remove your voice box or i cannot go inside the brain and remove a part of the brain along with a normal margin as i said why because uh, each part of even a small area of a brain uh, controls a very important function of your body so if i were to remove a 2 cm tumor along with a 1 cm area you will might end up paralyzed so in those cases we use radiation to burn that site or to you know burn that disease in that area this is what radiation does many it many places radiation has become superior to surgery like i said in vocal cord cancer or brain cancer where we feel that surgery might not be required we would offer you first radiation now as i said that radiation would uh, burn that area because radiation is a local treatment again you know you can't give it at multiple sites so again just like surgery radiation would help us in localized disease so up to stage 1 and 2 probably in some cases stage 3 radiation would help us but again radiation would not help us in stage 4 now the stage 4 or the advanced diseases where it has spread to multiple sites we would want to give you something which acts at multiple places and what goes at multiple places is your blood so we use blood to deliver those medication which acts at multiple places and that is where the chemotherapy steps in we give you some medications which are you know diluted in uh, the fluids that we give you and they are transfused into your body and they go through blood and reach all those sites which could be lung liver bone uh, wherever the cancer is and they cause a lot of they kill all those cancer cells now unfortunately cancer cells are tough to kill and because they are tough to kill unfortunately some less tougher and normal cells die and because these normal cells die this leads to a side effects that we know of chemotherapy is very famous for like vomiting like fall of hair like you know uh, not feeling all right like having lot of body aches so this is what happens with chemotherapy that chemotherapy not only kills the cancer cells which are tougher but it also kills some normal cells which are less tougher in nature and these less normal cells are the ones which are present in our intestine in the form of our hair in form of our oral cavity so that is why you have lot of loss of taste you have loss lot lot of loss of appetite you have multiple episodes of loose stools you have loss of hair and these are the common side now not all chemotherapies are these toxic not all patients develop these kind of toxicity this is a very in, individualized thing i cannot predict which patient will develop which type of toxicity and that is why chemotherapy has to be prescribed by a specialist who evaluates you who looks at you and tells you that you know you might get develop this side effect and we should do it a lot of patients ask me that will i lose hair or not and if i don't lose hair it means that the chemotherapy is not working it's not that on an average 80% patients lose hair 20% don't lose hair but uh, losing hair is not a surrogate that the chemotherapy is affected or not uh, chemotherapy is becoming more and more specific more and more less toxic we have now targeted therapy and something what is known as immunotherapy these are the newer medicines these medicines uh, like the words suggest targeted they are targeted in nature they will not affect your normal cells but they will are target specific and will only affect the cancer cells and hence they are supposed to be less toxic but obviously because they are newer they might be a tad costlier and we have to take that till the finish so in a nutshell this is what about uh, chemotherapy and uh, radiotherapy 
but i would say that the treatment is very very individualized uh, and uh, we take everybody on a case to case basis it is not a blanket treatment that all breast cancer should get this or all lung cancer should get this uh, there has to be a, a a committee which sits down a committee which decides what is the right treatment and what is the treatment appropriate to you your disease and your body great doctor uh, here that means what you say uh, that chemotherapy whenever we hear chemotherapy does that mean that person is already in the fourth stage like is that can is that implied no so uh, again you cannot infer that way but you what you can infer is definitely that they were probably not in stage 1 or 2 and they were in a bit advanced stage that we needed to add chemotherapy however uh, uh, blood cancers per se do not have any form of surgery which we can do they get treated only by chemotherapy so uh, if uh, the patient has blood cancer then the treatment is always going to be chemotherapy so not all chemotherapy means that the patient in stage 4 uh, many times we have to switch to multi modality treatment so the same patient would require surgery followed by chemotherapy or chemotherapy first to reduce the size of the disease and then once the disease has become smaller then they will require some form of surgery or radiotherapy so it is that what i'm saying okay. that it, it, there, there is no flow chart that you can follow and you can uh, implement in the patient there are a lot of factors which have to be taken in and uh, multiple specialties have to sit down together to chalk out the treatment plan because see you have to understand that you can treat disease the first time the best way okay so the first attempt has to be made and that has to be the best attempt there are no second chances the second chances if you take then the chances of cure reduce okay so that is why the first attempt has to be in a way that which is according to the guidelines one second it should be uh, uh, personalized to the patient you know i cannot uh, offer the same treatment for a patient who is 80 year old versus the same treatment to a 40 year old so that treatment has to be personalized according to the patient and it has to be in cognizant to the fact about what is the family support of the patient how is the financial needs of the patient you can't prescribe a treatment which is very costly to a patient who can never afford it what is the use of that treatment that is why you have to look at the patient holistically you can't just uh, you know you can't it, 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 it's it's not something that you can prescribe by just seeing a report you have to talk to the patient you have to see the patient you have to understand the background of the patient before you take a call Yeah, doctor. Yeah, coming to what you just said about cost, cost. You know, a lot of people are scared to get cancer, cancer because of the treatment cost. So uh, this is something which is a scare. You know, when a cancer happens in Bengali, yes. we say cancer. I'm not Bangalai boli. I will tell you in English later. The Bangalai boli cancer. I'm on a certain road. It has many prane mare. Many cancer is a disease which kills you both as far as your wealth or money is concerned, yeah, yeah. as well as your life. So. here people are scared you know that you know how much we are and lot of people lose their lives because yes, they can't yes, afford yes. so so i i i just tell us about this a little bit no so uh 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 Uh, what what i would want to uh, impress upon you is that you have to understand that as the disease progresses in stage the extent of treatment increases so a stage 1 uh, cancer would just probably require a surgery but a stage 3 cancer would require both surgery as well as chemotherapy and probably radiotherapy so the cost of treatment increases the duration of treatment increases the complexity of treatment increases and you end up spending more for treatment that is why your and my role is to help identify these patients at a early stage so that they spend lesser amount of money second thing is that they should get the correct treatment if they don't get the correct treatment then if a surgery is required and the surgeon is not able to do the surgery they might end up giving chemotherapy to that patient now that chemotherapy will take up the money that is supposed to get uh, take but the patient will not have the desired effect that is why it's important that you get the right form of treatment done at the right time if i am to do surgery but if i do surgery at a time when the patient has already progressed to a stage 3 my surgical outcome will not be as good as it would have been in stage 1 that is why it's important to do it at the right time third is it to be done by the right person if the right person does it so if you get a uterus removed by a person who is not in tune to getting a, 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 a uterine cancer out your oncologist will tell you that you have got a half baked surgery and now you should again go for surgery so you will end up paying twice 
for the same surgery because now you need to again go for that surgery so it has to be the right treatment at the right time at the right person at the right place so all these things have to fall in place to get the maximum chances of cure so you have to understand that you asked me about the chances of cure the chance you can maximize the chances of cure you can reach 99% you can touch 100% but for that to happen all the four rights have to come in the uh, correct place right treatment right place right person and the right time all these four things when they come together the chances of your treatment become maximum i think wonderfully said you know uh, dr babu jeta bolchen je shomoy moto timely jodi amra treatment start korte pari ebong shothik manush ke diye jodi amra treatment shothik doctor ke diye ebong shothik process the right process jodi amra shuru theke initiate korte pari jate kina double kaj na hoy jeromo uni bolchen je if you have a suppose an ovarian cancer apni ekjon gynecologist er kache giye operate korale দেখা গেল ইউ নো দ্য ট্রিটমেন্ট ইজ নট প্রপার ইট ইজ ইমপ্রপার সো अगेन আপনাকে আবার অনকোলজিস্ট এর কাছে আসতে হলো যে আবার সার্জারি করতে তো এই করে আমাদের খরচাও বেড়ে যাচ্ছে এবং আমাদের টাইমলাইন বেড়ে যাচ্ছে এবং এটাকে টাইমলি করতে হবে এই যে উনি বলছেন যে ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ টু সারভাইভ ক্যান্সার মানে আমাদের যদি মৃত্যু অ্যাভয়েড করতে হয় সো উই নিড টু ডু ইট টাইমলি মানে এটাকে আমরা ফেলে রাখতে পারবো না তো হোপ ইট আইডো নো কিপ ইট উই কিপ ইট পেন্ডিং আমরা এটাকে বলি না এখন না পরে করব এখন না পরে করব এখন টাকা নিয়ে পরে করব In fact, I don't have money now. We do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get the money. Now, we do it later when I get এবং আমরা ভাবি যে এদের টাকা আছে বলে এরা পেরেছে উই থিং দে हैव লট অফ মানি দ্যাটস হোয়াই দে দে সেভ देयर লাইফ নো ইট ইজ নট দ্যাট দে গট দে ওয়েন্ট টু দ্য রাইট প্লেস দে ওয়েন্ট টু দ্য রাইট ডক্টর দে গট দ্য রাইট ট্রিটমেন্ট এট দ্য রাইট টাইম ইন ফ্যাক্ট দে জিনিস তারা করেছে বলে তারা কিন্তু সেভ করেছে হ্যাঁ তারা হয়তো বিদেশে গেছে দে মাইট হ্যাভ গন অ্যাব্রড কিন্তু আই অ্যাম ভেরি কনফিডেন্ট দ্যাট সেই ট্রিটমেন্ট যেটা আজকে বিদেশে পেয়েছে সেই ট্রিটমেন্ট আমাদের দেশেও হলো উই কোড হ্যাভ ডান ইট ইন आवर ओन কান্ট্রি অলসো হোয়াট উই 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 সি পিপল গেটিং অ্যাব্রড ডিগনোজ so money is always not the factor there are so many other factors into it and as a doctor it is not my job to tell you how much money you should spend it is my job also to tell you realistically what should be your expectations by spending that money i will not or no doctor should tell you to spend money you should not sell your house for treatment of a stage 4 cancer because whatever you do you might not be able to help him and that house might be the only source for the kids to eat so you should so that is why it's very important the responsibility lies with us to give you the right information it's not just that excellent. you have to spend money excellent excellent i'm thinking doctor who darun kotha bolen uni bollen je ami doctor hisebe khali apnader bolbo na kharcha korun apnar jodi ekta bari thake she bari ta apni bikri kore apni apnar cancer patient the পয়সা দিলেন সব খরচ করলেন তারপর পিছনটা বাঁচলো না তখন যে বাচ্চাগুলো সেখানে থাকতো তারাও তাদের মাথার উপরে ছাদ থাকবে না তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে উনি বলছেন যে আমাকে পেশেন্টের সাথে কথা বলতে হবে আমার পেশেন্ট পার্টির সাথে কথা বলতে হবে আমার বুঝতে হবে তারা কতটা পারবে কি পারবে এবং সেই অনুযায়ী তাদের আমাকে সাজেশন দিতে হবে এবং এই জন্য আই হ্যাভ আ ভেরি হ্যাপি নিউজ টু অল অফ ইউ হু আর স্টিল ভিউইং এন্ড হু উইল ভিউ আওয়ার প্রোগ্রাম ইজ দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ টাইড আপ উইথ ডক্টর শুভঙ্কর ফর অনকোলজি এবং উনি এবং ওনার রেডিওথেরাপিস্ট এবং ওনার কেমোথেরাপিস্ট আমি কি আপনাদের দেখাচ্ছি আই উইল শেয়ার উইথ ইউ ইয়েস 
yes uh, আমাদের যে টিউমার বোর্ড স্বাস্থ্য বন্ধু এবং ইন্টারন্যাশনাল অনকোলজি ক্যান্সার থেরাপি সেন্টার্স এর সঙ্গে আমরা করছি উই हैव থ্রি এক্সপার্টস যারা কিনা আপনারা যখন আমাদের রিপোর্ট পাঠাবেন ক্যান্সার रिलेटेड রিপোর্ট ডক্টর শুভম তার উইল বি হেডিং দি দিস পার্টিকুলার বোর্ড এবং হি ইজ ফর্মালি টাটা মেমোরিয়াল হসপিটালে আপনারা দেখছেন উনি ছিলেন এখন হি a consultant with the uh, Portis International Oncology Senior Surgeon. Amade Shonge as a uh, 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 Dr. Tripti Saksena Achen, who is into re- who's a radiologist. Ebon uni formally aims, after an issue, All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Amshunesen, which is one of the best hospitals in India, if not the best. Uh, uni Aage Chilean Radio Oncologist of uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. ट्रीटमेंट प्लान এই অসুখ হয়েছে এবং এর জন্য এই 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 ট্রিটমেন্ট করা দরকার এরপরে এটা পাওয়ার পরে যদি আপনারা মনে করেন যে আপনারা ডাক্তারের সঙ্গে কথা বলবেন আমরা ভিডিও কলের অর্গানাইজ করব যেখানে কিনা আপনারা তিনজনই থাকবেন ইট ইজ নট অনলি ডক্টর গার বাট ডক্টর মোদাসের আহমদ এন্ড ডক্টর তৃপ্তি সাক্সেনা উইল বি ইন দ্য বোর্ড এখানে তিনজনকেই আপনারা দেখতে পাবেন এবং তিনজনই আপনাদের ব্রিজ করবে এক্স্যাক্টলি আপনাদের সমস্যাটা কি এবং আপনাদের কি ট্রিটমেন্ট করতে হবে আপনাদের কত খরচা হতে পারে এবং ডক্টর গার্গ হ্যাজ অলসো অ্যাসured us যে উনি বলেছেন আমাদের যে ইফ পসিবল উই উইল ট্রাই টু গিভ ডিসকাউন্টস টু پیشنট মানে আমরা যদি এই টিউমার বোর্ডে থ্রু দিয়ে যাই আমরা হয়তো پیشنট দের কিছু ডিসকাউন্টও দিতে পারবো তো আজকে আমাদের এই বিউটিফুল একটা উপহার ডক্টর গার্গ আমাদের দিয়েছেন ইট ইজ আ ভেরি ভেরি বিউটিফুল গিফট আই থিং টু স্বাস্থ্য বন্ধু ওয়ার ডক্টর গার্গ হ্যাজ গিভেন এন্ড ইউ নো আই উই রিয়েলি হ্যাপি ইউ নো দ্যাট Uh, this has happened uh, that is uh, what i want to say uh, we uh, are really thankful to you doctor you know that you have agreed to, uh, to be a part of shastrabundu and uh, be a part of this entire process in helping people to detect cancer as well as you know to help them in getting treated in a proper way and not only that you have told us that wherever possible you will also help them with discounts i think it's, it's amazing so i think uh, my friends if you have anything to do with oncology do not hesitate connect with me connect at the number that is given down which is scrolling you have our website at shastrabogya there my number comes so in number pe apni amake jogajog korben ami apnader sob puro byapar ta ke i will uh, you know take you through so i am there shastrabogya is always there for all of you that is why we are shastrabogya amader kaj hi hocche মানুষের পাশে থাকা সব সময় মানুষের সঙ্গে থাকা সব সময় এবং মানুষকে সাহায্য করা স্বাস্থ্য বন্ধু ইজ নট আজনেস স্বাস্থ্য বন্ধু ইজ এ সার্ভিস করে না আজকে এই যে অনুষ্ঠানটা দেখছেন ডক্টর গার্গের সঙ্গে আগামী শুক্রবার ব্ল্যাক ফাঙ্গস নিয়ে দেখবেন অ্যান্ড ইউ উইল গো অন সিং লর্ড অফ প্রোগ্রামস কামিং ইন দ্য ফিউচার দিস ইজ নট টু ডু বিজনেস বাট দিস ইজ জাস্ট টু মেক ইউ মোর ইনফর্মড অ্যাবাউট ভেরিয়াস কাইন্ড অফ ডিসিজেস আমাদের শরীরে যে বিভিন্ন অসুখ আছে সেইগুলো সম্পর্কে আরো মানুষকে জানানোর জন্য আমরা এই প্রোগ্রামগুলো করছি উই আর হেল্পিং পিপল সো দি আইডিয়া অফ দিস প্রোগ্রামস ইজ টু ক্রিয়েট অ্যাওয়ারনেস সো দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান ইউ নো গেট টু দ্য রাইট অ্যাজ ডক্টর সেড ইউ দ্য রাইট ডক্টর অ্যাট দ্য রাইট টাইম উইথ দ্য রাইট ট্রিটমেন্ট সো ইউ नीड টু ডু দ্যাট এন্ড স্বাস্থ্য বন্ধু ইজ জাস্ট ফর দ্যাট টু টেক ইউ টু দ্য রাইট প্লেস অ্যাট দ্য রাইট টাইম উইথ দ্য রাইট ডক্টর এন্ড উইথ দ্য রাইট কস্ট please understand shastra bundu is not there to see that you know your pockets are free we are not that kind of a uh, medical tourism company we in fact tell our hospitals to reduce the billing to see that bill ta ke kom kora jay jate manush jontrona kom pay amra jani je manush jokhon oshustho hoy it is not only the disease that pains it is not only the oshuk that pains but the finances taka paisa that is where you know shastra bundu will come in and surely help you yes doctor so i i i uh, wanted to add that you know 
cost comes very late in the picture you know cost is the last thing which should decide your treatment and that is very unfortunate when we are not able to offer treatment before of, uh, because of the cost your and my and everybody who's listening's aim should be that they should get the right treatment if they get the right treatment then believe me i tell you none of the patient deny treatment because of the cost because then they know that they are getting probably they are getting their money's worth and they arrange for anything so the first thing that is uh, see th there are basically three stages of treatment uh, one is diagnosis whether you have cancer or not second is the stage of cancer what stage of cancer is and then comes the treatment part so with this tumor board what we want to achieve is that wherever you are you can be in any part of india or for the world that matter do the two parts do the diagnosis part do the staging part at your local place okay we tell you the investigation you get it done you connect with us again so that by the time you come to us we have a treatment plan ready to with us this helps you to reduce your cost this helps you to get a right picture this gives you a more uh, important it saves your time you know you won't spend 15 days out of your house just to give, uh, waiting for the treatment to start if we have everything yeah. in place we 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 save your time and nowadays time is money you don't want to spend 15 days loitering in a unknown city spending on the board, boarding and lodging if you can do it at the comfort of your house so diagnosis and staging we should be able to help you wherever you are but the treatment part obviously we need to probably move to a place where all the facilities are available all the specialists are available and that has to happen at a timely fashion with the right people and that is what our approach is to give it to your home within your home and we we are actually obliged to connect with mr sain gupta and shastra bandhu that we are using their platform to give that service to you and we are trying to improve our reach using i would use the word using by using mr sain gupta's network to reach out to you so that we can genuinely help people and that help comes in many forms it is not just financial it is psychological help it is social help it is you know it might not be with money but give, you know talking softly uh, giving you the right picture is a great help absolutely doctor i think uh, what you said is excellent because uh, uh, i know i remember i had seen a video quite some time back where a us doctor said the doctor's job is not only to cure the patient but most yeah. importantly is to listen to the patient and empathize the patient Yes, so yes. i remember this american doctor saying you know and which is lacking today so ajke eta amra amra bangladesh o ami oneker sathe kotha bolechi tara bole okhan kar onek doctor babu ra achen tara sei shomoy tai de dite chay na kintu ajke doctor karan jeta bollo je amader ei medical board e amra sei shomoy ta debo we will give you the time amra apnar kotha dhurjo dhore shunbo ebong amra apnader shothik ekta pothe niye jabo ebong unni arekta beautiful kotha bollen je apni bangladesh e thekei chikitsa korte parben kibhabe unni पद्धतिंग I think the most important question to be addressed. This is the most important question. We have this mindset. We have this mindset, especially I've seen in Bangladesh, maybe in India also, that you know, whenever it's cancer, the first hospital and the only hospital that comes to people's mind is Tata Memorial Hospital. People, if you tell them go somewhere else, people will not go. People have this strong, firm belief. Now, how do we convince them? You know that treatment no, no, no. is also available outside Tata Memorial, and it cannot be as it may be as good as Tata Memorial. How do we convince you, sir? Uh, because you are an ex Tata Memorial doctor. Because you are an ex Tata Memorial doctor, I'm asking. I I don't want to convince them that the treatment outside Tata Memorial is good. I want to experience them. I want to offer that treatment, and once they realize that similar treatment is outside. you know there are so many hospitals other than tata who do actually advertising okay but they still are not able to convince patients to come to that we don't want to do that we want to offer our services at the comfort of their home and once they know that this is at offer you know and these treatment are as per guidelines 
even if i tell them they don't go to tata they will still go to tata but once they go to tata they take our paper with it which describes the treatment and the doctor at tata memorial also approves our treatment they will themselves realize probably five patients will not probably 10 patients will not but the 11th patient will realize that what we were saying was also right and they did not need to come to tata memorial and spend that much i have been i have i am i am from delhi but i have stayed in tata memorial for four years so i know how costly it is living around there the treatment might be cheap but the amount of money that you spend in staying there Uh, the amount of money you spend in eating there the amount of money you spend in traveling there makes up for all the cost that you would have spent uh, saved in the treatment but what is important is the faith that tata memorial has developed and that is what our aim is to win your faith and we will win it not by cheap techniques not by offering discounts not by advertising we will win your faith by providing our services by providing you the right advice and once we touch that chord you will not want to go to tata memorial because the when the same services are offered uh, at easier cost at better prices without waiting for uh, doing it at the comfort of your home you would not want to you see you don't go to tata because you want to go to tata you want you go to tata because you have faith in tata you take all the hardships in going to tata because you believe that if i go to tata i will get all right if you develop the same faith if you develop the same if you get the same service i have no issues that people will realize that we are doing the same thing as tata memorial and i have been at tata for more than 4 years i know the treatment protocols we have been doing the same i have got trained from the best of the people and i that is why i have the faith in my team and uh, uh, the conviction with which i tell you that we will give you the same treatment once we are given a chance and Uh, we seek that chance at the comfort of your home you don't even need to come down to me with the help of shastra bandhu we are getting treatment at your home so that you, you yourself know what's to be expected before you come down to get that actual treatment and this time that we promise this this treatment that we promise will be at par with anything that you would have seen fantastic i think uh, very well said doctor टाटा The advantage that you get from this tumor board is the only report that the after Tata Memorial is done. Only one thing that Amar Tata has done. You don't have to come to me. You go with that to Tata Memorial, and Tata Memorial will understand. The after already there is a set, uh, you know, treatment plan which has been given. So it only after Tata Memorial. That is, after that, Amar no tumor is done. Not done. That is, only after that, Amar Tata has done. That is, only after that, Amar Tata has done. That is, only after that, Amar Tata has done. That is, only after that, Amar खर्चा সেই খরচাটা মেকআপ করে দেয় ওই ওই ট্রিটমেন্ট কস্ট যে ট্রিটমেন্ট কস্ট সেটা তো মেকআপ করে দেয় সো ইউ আর নট কম্পিটিং উইথ টাটা মেমোরিয়াল ইউ আর নট সেইং টাটা মেমোরিয়াল ইজ ভেরি গুড উই অনার টাটা মেমোরিয়াল উই থ্যাঙ্ক টাটা মেমোরিয়াল ফর সেভিং সো মেনি লাইফস টিল নাও ইন ফ্যাক্ট থ্রু দিস প্রোগ্রাম আই পে মাই ট্রিবিউট টু টাটা মেমোরিয়াল হসপিটাল ফর দ্য লাভলি ওয়ার্ক দ্যাট দে হ্যাভ বিন ডুইং ফর আস ফর সো মেনি ইয়ার্স আই থিং ইটস ইজ এ গ্রেট থিং বাট হোয়াট উই আর সেইং ইজ দ্যাট try us try our tumor board you will not get disappointed to apni apni barite bosheyi apni ekta treatment er sutro peye jaben ebong apnar jokhon proyojon hobe amader jogajog korte parben amra apnake connect koriye apnake ekta shorti visha dekhate parbo the idea is to show you the right direction the idea is not to make business out of this entire tumor board it has got nothing to do we will just take the charges of the doctor jeta doctor pore but otherwise It's going to be a very reasonable price. Apna the chinta kutta ben, amra kuch alpo yete eta kuchhi. So apna amader joga jo korbe, nemko amra nischi. We are very confident that we will be able to 
you in the right direction as far as cancer is concerned. Thank you very much, Dr. Gar, for being with us today. Thank you very much for your contribution in uh, creating a cancer board for Sasko Bundu so that we can cater to more and more cancer patients and we can help them to get the right treatment at the right time, at the right place and with the right doctor. So thank you very much, Dr. Garg, once again uh, for joining us this week. You have been very kind to join us uh, for two consecutive weeks and maybe, you know, we'll get you back again because uh, I think this topic is such a thing that there yes. are many more questions that people have yes. as well as I have. We'll get you again very soon again. Uh, so thank you once again for being a part of Custom. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sain Gupta. And I'm sure. And thank uh, you, everyone. If you have a program, you can see that you have a problem with Shastam. You can see that you have a problem with Shastam. You can see that you have to connect you with the best doctors and you know, with the best treatment so that you know you, you get the right uh, treatment. And this Shastam is no more only for Bangladesh. It is a Bangladesh, and now we are also now catering to Indian patients. So, if there are people in India also who want to get the right uh, treatment and uh, go to the right place, uh, you can connect with us and we will definitely help you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bertrand. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night.